Did that death close him up? Because see, you are planning something evil against him. Look at verse 38. And he said unto them, It is doctrine, the way of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutation in the marketplaces and the chief seats, in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at peace, which give our widow, widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater condemnation. Even though he knew that they were plotting against him, and they were fighting against him, and they wanted to destroy him, yet he still spoke the truth. He warned the people of their deception, of their false doctrine. And he didn't say that privately and secretly. He said that openly for everybody and those concerned to hear. Let's go to point number two. The preacher's faithfulness to the full message. We're coming to Daniel chapter 4. Daniel. We're looking at chapter 4 of Daniel. Verses 23 to 26. Daniel 4, 23. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Kill the tree down, cut the tree down, and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a bunch of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wedged with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the peace of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation of king. This is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King. Here comes the interpretation. Here comes the message in fullness. They shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee each grass as an oxen, and they shall watch thee for the dew of heaven. And seven times seven years shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and giveth thee to whomsoever he will. And whereas he commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after, not until after then, after, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Can you see this man here, Daniel? Yes, he was tender-hearted, but he was truthful. He was courageous. He had the strength of character to declare the truth without flinching. To maintain a clear conscience before God and man. He had to allow the spirit of truth to have full control of his heart. What Daniel declared was a divine mystery. But he did not allow his intellect to interfere with the mystery of God. This is a mystery. And the Bible is full of mysteries. And the faithful man, the spirit-filled minister, will not fail to declare the mysteries of God just because you cannot understand. That's a mystery. That does not make you to allow your intellect to interfere with the mystery of God. When God said, Noah, I'm bringing a flood upon the land. Everybody will be destroyed in the flood. That was a mystery. It had never rained to flood the land like that before. And when God said, I'm bringing fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah, that was a mystery. It had never happened before that time, but Lot went out and he said, Oh, get out of this place. A mystery is going to come. This, nation, this country or this city will be destroyed. That was a mystery. And when God said, go tell the children of Israel, Moses, tonight I'm going to visit the land of Egypt. 
of the firstborn in the land, I'm going to slay them because Pharaoh refuses to let my son go. It was a mystery, something that never happened before. And when God said, Israel, go around Jericho. And all those people in Jericho, they'll be destroyed only by the shouts of the praise of the people of God. It was a mystery. Nobody ever heard of anything like that before. But you know, all those preachers and prophets and patriots, they did not allow their intellect and their mind or their misunderstanding or lack of understanding to interfere with the mystery of God. And here was a mystery. It had never happened to any man in the history of the world that a man will become mad like an animal and then will be eating grass and then they will chain him down they will be driven up from the throne they will be in the open field and the dew of heaven will come over him for seven years and he'll just be rattling and rambling along with the animals. It had never happened to man, to a king. It was a mystery. But Daniel said, this is mysterious. Because the God of majesty has a lot of mysteries. And he declared that mystery without missing words. That's what, the, that's what the Lord is telling us today. There are a lot of mysteries in the Bible. The Lord is telling us that the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. That's a mystery. And you're not going to allow your mind, your brain, your intellect to interfere with that mystery. He said, Behold, I show you a mystery which shall not all sleep, but in the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet shall sound. And then it says, The dead shall rise, and we which are alive will be caught together with them in the air. It's a mystery. But you're not going to allow your intellect to interfere with that. You declare it and you pronounce it as the Lord has said. That's exactly what this man Daniel did. Ministry would be easier if we could remove the idea of penalty, of judgment, of hellfire from our preaching. If we can just preach about love and forgiveness and mercy and goodness, and prosperity and provision and deliverance and good good things ministry would be easy almost anybody can be a preacher but to pronounce doom and damnation on sinning humanity is an unpleasant task human tenderness does not want to preach to preach it yet we must there are passages of scripture that a preacher might prefer not to read, not to expound, and not to explain. Yet, he is under divine orders to faithfully declare all the counsel of God. We must faithfully do what the Lord has called us to do. We cannot conceal the horrors that await your repentant sinner. Daniel had no flattering words for Nebuchadnezzar because God had no such words for him. God was speaking to the man. So, and Daniel was on a channel. And he would not obstruct, he would not distort God's message to the wicked monarch, to the wicked king. And then here is it, Daniel did not take away whatever might seem offensive from God's message to the king. Wasn't it offensive to so even the hearing of a normal person? They'll drive you out. You'll become mad. You'll eat grass like animal, and you will not even come for shelter in the night. You'll not be like a domestic animal. You'll be like a wild animal in the rain, in the sunshine, in the dew. Everything will be falling upon you. That was not a palatable thing. That was not something you welcome. But Daniel did not take away what might seem offensive from that message. Why should we ever take out any seemingly offensive detail from the divine word? Lies and flatteries do not lead anybody to repentance. That's how many people are running to meetings and whatever it is they are running to you and there's no conviction there's no conversion because lies and flatteries do not lead to repentance have truths cannot save the soul if i go the ministry is the salvation of souls and not bring glory 
we shall declare the whole truth of God's word fearlessly, forcefully, and faithfully. But it wasn't only Daniel. Other people too that God called in Bible days, they did exactly what God called them to do. This is your own time. You'll do what the Lord has called you to do. I said you will do it. Like Daniel, now we can have not just one Daniel in the nation of in the nation Babylon. Now we can have many Daniels, and then we can stand and declare the word of the Lord, and the power of God will go with you. If we have not just one Daniel in the nation of in the nation Babylon, now we can have many Daniels, and then we can stand and declare the word of the Lord, and the power of God will go with you. The protection of the Lord will be with you, and nobody will touch your life in Jesus' name. Let's look at them. We're looking at First Kings chapter First Kings chapter twenty-two. First Kings chapter twenty-two. Daniel was not alone. There were people like him in Bible days, and there should be people like him in a contemporary time, even today. In First Kings chapter twenty-two, verse nineteen. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Tramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth his spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Where are we? How are you going to do that? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore behold the Lord. Has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Shenana, uh, uh, Shenana, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? To see that when this man prophesied as Micaiah. Another one false prophet that wanted smooth, smooth, saying, went and then smote him on the cheek and said, How did you see a vision like that? Where did the Spirit of God go? Let me and come to speak to you. And Micaiah said in verse 25, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Verse 26, and the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow, that's the prophet, put this fellow in the prison, and feed him for the bread of affliction and water of affliction, until I come in, in what? In peace, and then did Micaiah then become a slave, bowing his head, trembling, cringing, crushed, because now, because of his message, he was going to suffer. Look at verse 28, and Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. But if you go to that war, I've declared to you, judgment has come. And even though you put me in prison, if you come back in peace, then the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Hakim, O people, every one of you, yes, they have were listening, and will know who is right by the end of the chapter. Before the end of the chapter, he have died for his iniquity, he didn't repent all. The prophets of God, they always declared the word of God, and they did it forcefully, faithfully, and Fearlessly. We're looking at Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 1. Here we have 
another prophet of God. They tried to shut him up, but he will not shut up. You will not shut up. Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, Ye only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities as a prophet. The Lord will not gloss over your iniquity, will not excuse your iniquity, will not overlook your iniquity. Therefore, will I punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed with the lion roar, with the lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth when the gene is for him? Shall one take his snare from the earth and has taken nothing at all? Shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth a secret unto the servants, his prophets, the prophets. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Also, if you look at verse 11, therefore, thus says the Lord, the Lord God, an adversary there shall be, even round about the land, and he shall bring down the strength, thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Did they congratulate him for being faithful, preaching the word, telling them the might of God? And did they all get on their knees and repent? No. What did they do? Chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 10. Then Amaziah the priest of Bethel sent to Jeroboam king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. Why? Because they were not willing to repent. They wanted a preacher, a pastor, a prophet that will come and just rob them and pat them at the back. That will say, you're doing okay, you're doing all right, yes, no problem, who is not a sinner? Everybody is sinning and God is a merciful God and God is going to overlook everything you've done. It's such a God of love and indulgence. God is such a good, good father. He knows you are human beings. That's what they wanted. But Amos said, no. The soul that sinners, tell me out loud, it shall die. And so, he said, the land is not able to be on his words. In verse 11, but thus Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, O thou prophet, O thou preacher, go, flee away, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. We don't want your message here. We don't want your review, your correction, your warning. Hold your peace. Go look for another field of ministry. Go to Judah and go and prophesy there. And then we're told in verse 13, but prophesy not again anymore at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel. Did you hear that? What's it? What is it? It is the king's chapel. As you go around the town, don't you see those chapels there? What do they tell them? What are they hearing? And he told Amos, and he said, don't prophesy here. 
This is the king's chapel. And then it says, It is the king's court. Then answered Amos and said unto Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son. But I was an hurt man, a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flood. And the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. You are telling me not to do what the Lord has called me to do. The Lord said, Go prophesy. And you tell me I should shut up and then go to another land. Will he stop? I said, Will he stop? Will you stop? No. Verse 16. Now, therefore, hear. He told me to stop. I have another message I'm going to give you. Here is it. In verse 16. Now, therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord. Then he continued the message again. And so we need to understand that nothing will shut us up. Nothing will shut you up in Jesus' name. Now, point number three. The pastor's fidelity and focus in ministry. We're looking at verse 27 of Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Verse 27. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Break up thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a thing of thy tranquility that 